Welcome back. Thank you for clicking on today's video. Today we're going to do a second example of a chi-squared hypothesis test and we're going to be using the FRED method. Now when we first were looking at contingency tables, if you remember from a few units back, we talked about this example which is sex and opinion of riding in a driverless passenger vehicle. And I said to you when we did it that the conditional distribution has a big difference in the percentages that are there. And so because of that, I expect that we're going to see an association between sex and opinion on riding in a driverless passenger vehicle. So we're going to test that today. Now. I have recreated this table, and remember all of the values that are included so far are what we call observed counts. So we're going to use those later uh, to see if there's a big enough difference between what we observe and what we expect to see to say that there is an association between sex and um, opinion on driving in a riding in a driverless uh, passenger vehicle. So we're going to start with F, which remember is the formulate the problem. First up is the population. So this was data collected from the Pew Research Center. So this would be all U.S. American adults. Our sample is 198. And remember, you use the same group it's just smaller, so we just say the size instead of all. Then we ask about the variables, and here we have sex and opinion, and we have to check that they're both categorical, and they are, so we're good. And then we need to state our hypotheses. So remember the null is no, so there's no relationship or they're not associated. So I would say um, there is not an association between sex and I'm just going to shorten it to opinion um, for the sake of the video and writing and the page, but normally you really should be very specific as to what the whole variable is. So then remember H sub A, there is a relationship or there is an association. So that's how we remember those. All right, so that's the first part of Fred done with that. Now we're going to move on to the R, which if you remember is reviewing conditions. So to do that, I actually need to calculate my expect, expected counts because reviewing conditions uh, requires that, and I'll just write it, the R in Fred, is review conditions. And we need to have less than... 20% of expected counts less than five and no expected count is less than one. So we're going to check that, but we have to um, calculate the expected counts. Now, remember when you calculate an expected count, it's the row total. So 99 times the column total. So 125 divided by the grand total, which is 198. So 99 times 125 divided by 198. Act to leave between your finger. So 99 times 125, we're going to divide that by the 198. Now remember that observed counts have to be whole numbers because um, they're counting how many individuals fall into that group, whereas the expected counts, because it's coming from a calculation, you would not um, have expect it to be a whole number. So next to do this expected count, we're going to do 99. That's the row total, but this time we have um, 73. And so 99 times 73, and then we still have that uh, 198. So. This comes out to be 36.5. And to check your work, you need to make sure that these two add up to 99, which they do. So we're good there. So moving into the next one, I have um, a new row total. So this expected count is not 99. Oh, <laughs> it is 99. Oh, it's silly. So that means that it's going to be the same as above because we have 99 is the row total, column total, grand total, same as above. And that would be true here then too. We have 99 
98. All right, 36.5. And you also uh, can make sure that these two add up to the total for the column, which they do, same here, 62.5 plus 62.5, there we go. So now to check conditions, my smallest expected count is 36.5. So none are less than five and none are less than one. So done with the R. Now on to executing calculations. So this is the longest portion for sure, execute. So first we're gonna calculate our chi-squared test statistic, which remember is the sum of all of the observed minus the expected squared divided by the expected. And so I'm gonna do that for each cell. Um, I'll try to keep you oriented to what we're doing. So this, we'll do it for this first cell. Uh, so here we have an observed uh, 53 minus 62.5, squaring that difference and then dividing by 62.5. So I'm gonna write this all out before um, I calculate. So the next one we're gonna do is the cell. So we have 46 and 36.5. So 46 minus 36.5 squared divided by 36.5. So that's that pink cell. And then we'll move into this cell. So women who would not. We have 72 minus 62.5 squared over 62.5. That was that blue cell. And then finally, we have this last cell here, which is 27 and 36.5. And that was that green cell. I'm going to calculate them in order. So I have 53 minus 62.5 squared divided by 62.5. So the cell chi-square for this is 1.44. And then we have 46 minus 36.5 squared divided by 36.5. That comes out to be 2.47. And then we have um, 72 minus 62.5 squared divided by 62.5. And that comes out to be 1.44. And then the last one, we have 27 minus 36.5 divided by, oops, forgot to square it, divided by 36.5, and that gives us 2.47. So now we add them all up to get our chi-squared. We have 1.44 plus 2.47 plus 1.44 plus 2.47, and we come up with a chi-squared test statistic of 7.82. Now, when we find <clears throat> our p-value, remember that we're interested in the area above, and it's also necessary to have degrees of freedom. And to find degrees of freedom, remember it's the number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. So we have a two rows by two columns. Remember you don't include the total. So I have two minus one times two minus one and I have one degree of freedom. So I'm going to enter this in my calculator. Um, you can use the uh, table in the back of the textbook, but because I have my calculator out, I'm just gonna do it this way. And we go second bars, chi squared CDF. And it wants your lower bound, and here that's where the highlighting starts, so 7.82. And then the upper bound would be positive infinity, and then we have one degree of freedom. And then into paste and enter, and our p-value is 0 0.005. Now, if you remember, this is quite small, and so because it's small, we make the decision to reject the null. So if a p-value is small, you reject the null. If it's not small, you don't reject the null. So that is executing calculations. So the next thing that we can do is drawing conclusions. That's our D in fresh. So draw conclusions. So because we rejected, we would say there is sufficient evidence. And again, this corresponds to when you reject, these always go together. So reject and sufficient to suggest, and then we're going to restate our alternative. That's always what you do when you draw conclusions. So if you remember, our alternative was there is an association. So there's sufficient evidence to suggest there is an association between sex and opinion on, I'm going to be more specific now, riding in driverless passenger vehicles. Vehicles, vehicles. You ever sometimes think to yourself, what would I do without spell check? This, this is the kind of stuff you do. Have to sound it out. Um, for US American adults. Okay, now. There's a relationship. And so we've said that if there is a relationship, you need to perform a post hoc analysis. So because we saw an association, we're gonna do the post hoc. Now, if you remember when you do these, essentially I'm gonna focus on these two as being my two populations. So now I'm gonna separate them into men and women. So I'm gonna focus on the wood column. You can do either one. I'm just gonna do wood this time. So I'm gonna keep the men as group one and the women as group two. So to calculate p hat, 
sub one, we have 46, that's the observed count, and then I'm gonna divide by 99. And then the p hat sub two is the observed count for women, so 27 divided by the 99. And those come out to be 0.4646 and 0.2727. So 0 0.4646 and 0.2727. So I'm going to use these values to calculate my confidence interval, which remember is p hat sub 1 minus p hat sub 2. And then you add and subtract to your z star multiplier and you multiply that by uh, the standard error, which is p hat sub 1 times 1 minus p hat sub 1 all over n sub 1 plus p hat sub 2 times 1 minus p hat sub 2 all over n sub 2. And then we take the square root of that. So I'm just going to plug and chug, follow along. Okay, so that's the interval that we have now to interpret that post -doc. So we would say we are 95%, and that's because we had the 95% confidence level multiplier. So we're 95% confident. And then remember, you're going to state your first parameter, and that was the men. So we're 95% confident the proportion of who would ride in a driverless passenger vehicle is between... 6% and 32.35%. Uh, higher than, and I'm saying higher because it's positive, than the proportion of women who would ride in a driverless passenger vehicle. And that's it. That's our postdoc and that's our chi-squared hypothesis test. I'll see you in future videos where I do one more chi-squared. See you there.